So today I will be doing a Christmas ornament. First thing is I'm sketching it in. It really isn't necessary, but I don't know. I just decided to loosely do it. Get my lines straight where the center of the tree will be. So I'm just sketching in with the watercolor pencil that I have. And then I have my wet palette on the right. I will use dark greens and light greens. I'm picking up Thalo blue and green tint, um, ultramarine blue, cad yellow. First thing is I'm just loosely putting in the, uh, the background color of the tree, so I'll have a deep color. I'm mixing in a little bit of um, orange to tone it down a little bit, so it's not so brightish, bright green. And then I'm using my brush lightly, putting the line in, and I will just loosely put in the branches. I have the same color palette that I usually use. I um, Cerulean blue is the lighter blue that I'm, so I'm just, you know, bringing the branches down and lightly placing them in. On the left hand side is one I already did. These are just um, already pre-cut Christmas tree ornaments. My husband drills a hole in them. Sometimes he makes them from the beginning, but I found these. And um, he'll drill a hole in the center where I can put a ribbon running through. So it kind of looks odd right now. Sometimes I make trees and I leave pockets in between, but this one I'm going to fill up and make it a big, big, thick tree. So I'm bringing in some uh, lighter color. I'm doing the same thing, just using lighter color, probably more cer cerulean blue and the yellow to make green. I don't usually just grab green out of the tube. So just shaping it in. Everything will be loose. Nothing will be um, perfectly drawn. Adding a little bit more yellow to it to lighten up the green and a little bit more of the orange to tone it down. And then a tint, a white to tint it, to bring it lighter. And then this will give it more depth so the dark will show behind. And, and I just move around the tree. There's no uh, particular placement that I'm putting it because there is no light source coming through. It's just, an, it's a, just a straight on Christmas ornament that I'm filling in. You can already see that it's starting to light up a little bit. A lot of the colors on the palette I won't use. I will use um, the the cad red and cad orange. I probably won't use any purple in here at all. So if you notice what I do first is this just, I didn't base coat the ornament at all. It has a white background. I kept it. Um, I'm doing the bottom right now of the stand. And what I did is I made a brown by using the three, three primary colors the red, yellow, and blue. And it makes it a, a deeper brown. And then I will go back and I will lighten it up. Give it a, so I'll have a depth. It won't just look like a ball just sitting there. So I'm lightening up my green again and I'm going in and putting some more lighter green in. So like I said, it doesn't have a background color yet. What I will do is I will do what's considered negative painting. I will do the um, paint the tree first and then go back in and paint the background and kind of push into the leaves. Um, I'm going to keep this tree full. It's not going to have like a lot of sharp points on it at all. So I'm putting in ornaments. I'm not making perfect circles. I'm just laying down some, I think I'm using cad red there, regular medium, cad red medium I believe I have on the palette. And I'm just dropping in some bulbs, scattering them around, touching each other, making them loose, not being perfect. I'll end up going back and smearing them a little bit. The paint is wet right now, so it keeps it so it um, pushes it back into the green a little bit. So, and all the paints, when I use them um, on my palette, I have it mixed with um, a, a medium gel that I put in. It uh, it helps thicken the paint. Even though I use this is this is not craft paint that I'm using. I am using a the um, golden paints 
And that's what I usually keep. And I also have a gold in there that I use. That, I believe, might be a craft paint. But what I'm doing is just popping and hitting it so it's just not red. It'll have a tint of gold on all the ornaments. I'm going to also bring that down on the bottom and put little swipes of cease uh, strokes. to um, give it more of a shape on the base. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm mixing in some white. I think I'm gonna do the background color now. So I use the cerulean blue and the white to do a background color. The other one I did more of a green. So I added some yellow to the, the one on my left hand side. But this one I'm doing more of a uh, light blue tint. So I'm just taking my paint brush and I'm laying it down and I'm pushing the paint into the branches. This one looks like it might be a little taking up less space than the other one, but each one is different. So I'm laying the paint down pretty thick, pushing the paint into, into the Christmas tree. I'm just going around and filling it in. And when it touches the tree, that's fine. That's what I want to do. I want to push the branches. Even if some of the green from the tree pushes into the background, I'm okay with that too. I'm using the same brush that I use a lot or the same style brush. Um, they're the long handle ones that I use when I stand up using my canvases. So I'm shaping the bottom of the stand a little bit. There's no connecting to it yet. I haven't done that yet. I will go back with the, I think they're Tombow pens. They're more of a um, sharper uh, marker that a lot of times I use. They come in different colors, but that's what I'm gonna go back in instead of that other pointy um, pen that I use a lot of times for signing. So I fill that in. You can see the tree looks like, you can see dimension. And I'm picking up, I think I needed, uh, I'm putting some more green in. Uh, as you look at your piece, you'll notice that it may be flat looking and you may need some more highlights in it. So I'm mixing up a color of yellow and, for yellow, uh, yellow and blue and just toned it down a little bit. And I'm going to go just move around the tree a little bit and give it some more depth by adding some highlight color. And mixing paint is trial and error. You hold it up, you know, to your tree, see if it's the color that you want, the value that you want. I'm just pushing the branches out a little bit. I felt like they were pushed in too far and I wanted the tree to look big. So I'm just going in there and taking my brush and just loosely bringing the tree down. Yeah. So I probably will be drying this. My intent was to have another one done, and, and it, it didn't happen that way, so that I can do my um, marking on with my uh, felt-tip pen, but I didn't, so I will, will be drying this. The sound is off. You will not hear it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm mixing in green again. This, that's the cerulean blue. You know, painting is trial and error. You go back, you, it's push and pull of colors. You put one color in, you look at it. You don't want a piece to look flat. You want it to have some depth. I'm going to put in um, some more of the Christmas ornaments with the cadmium red. Cadmium red. And uh, like I said, they're not just perfectly placed. They're just scattered among the trees. So it looks like some are sitting inside. I'm just holding the, the, my brush to the side and laying them down. I very seldom use fine tip brushes or dot brushes. I don't want everything perfect looking. So if you use the, I used the whole brush at the same time. I barely wiped it off. I kept it dirty a lot. Mm. And like I said, these are golden paints that I'm using. And my palette that I'm using is a the gray palette. It's a gray tone palette. So now I'm going to get the hair dryer out. 
and uh, I need to get it dry so that I can take the tomboy pen and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape just look for shapes inside of the Christmas tree and don't make a complete circle with each ball just make a very small little like a c-stroke around the different ornaments and I'm also going to take the pen and bring it down the tree and kind of it's the tomboy pen maybe backwards uh, and then make like a branch line going through hitting the the stand of the tree and it's not perfect I'm kind of like skipping and hopping across the tree and then like I said I'm going to the ornaments I'm just looking for shapes that I might have in there smeared And finding the shape of my ornaments that I used with the red and the gold. So it's not like each individual ornament is red or each uniform ornament is gold. It has both colors on it. One for depth and one for highlight. Yep. And all that's done. I believe the next thing I will do, because I didn't paint the sides of it either, um, I may be adding some more red, some t uh, or great gold, gold and red. Sometimes when you put the background on in that, you, you will see that you need to add a little more. Oh, I'm making along the, the tomboy, I'm adding some highlight on it, so I took the gold and went across the little branch that comes down that's, that's holding the tree. And going back and putting a little more highlights in with the gold. I didn't use white on this at all, I think, on the tree. It was only cabin red and a gold color. I probably have like four different golds, and each one looks a little different. So um, now what I'm doing is using my finger, just running along the side. That was raw wood. I didn't paint this already on the sides either. I'm running along the sides with it and also going up it a little bit in the front. So the gold will come on to the base of the ornament. It's hard to get in those little grooves there with your fingers, but I'm okay if it's not perfect. And I'm going to bring it all around. I might have to dry this again. I have a little hole that my husband drilled in the center that will have a um, ribbon going through it to hang. See, nothing is perfect. You can still see the background, which this wood had, um, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is, but it has lines in it. I like it because it looks very um, farmhousey. I would farmhousey, is that a word? This is a fan brush that I've had forever, since I, uh, probably 20 years. And I wet the brush, get the, um, the white paint. You can use other things. You don't have to use a fan brush. You can just use a regular round brush or whatever. I kind of like how this, um, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, today's one of those days my brain wasn't thinking. I couldn't remember, okay, which way do I hold it? Do I hold it here, here? I'm, I see? Yeah. Anybody ever have those days? I'm brushing. I'm just patting out some white, and I'm going to also do some gold. On the other one, I think I just did white. But you just hit down on it, and you can also take your finger and just flick it. But my hands were already full of paint, and I didn't want to I didn't want to get any more paint on my hands. And so that just pushes the the tree back. I grabbed a little gold. I probably need to wet it. Yep. Thin it out a little bit. If you thin it too much, it's going to come out like big spots. So I think that's what happened to me here. Yep. I see a big spot there that I'm going to have to wipe off with the rag. Hey, nothing's perfect, right? It's all good. <laughs> Yep, and so, um, yeah, it has the spots on it. And then I'm going to probably have to dry this again. Oh, there you go. Use your finger, Marie. Mm -hmm. I'll probably I'll have to dry this again because I will want to put a... A lot of times I'll, I'll write um, a little saying on it, but I'm going to use a stamp. 
they had not sign my name. I had to fix up the little spot mess I made. Hey, try to be more, more precise with things. Okay, I'm, I'm taking and just correcting some of my ornament that are hanging on the tree. Turn on that dryer and get it dry. It needs to be dry so that um, I'm gonna put the stamp on the bottom of it, the last one. Uh, I think I put tis the season. This one will be joy and peace. So I probably make a hundred ornaments throughout this time of year. But usually I will have them laid out and I'll make a few at a time, not just one. But this is for video. I'm signing my name with the finer point pen and joy and peace. And make sure when you use a stamp that it's a stamp that dries quickly because some of the stamps are for embossing. I took it off the color right now to make sure. And then I stamped it, and I don't believe it's stuck on well. That Joy and Peace did not. So there is a fix for that. You can use a, use a fine tip brush and rebrush over it, or take your um, Tomboy marker and go back over it. That's what I'm doing. Some days I have trouble. Um, I don't know how anybody else is, but I have trouble writing. My hand isn't as steady, so stamps it is for me. And from here, you can even see all the different colors in the trees. This traditional red, green, and gold. And then I cut up some ribbon. This is a thicker ribbon. I thought I had the thinner one. So that little hole there, I used this tool my husband gave me and push it through. But I think I'm struggling with it a little bit. That is not all dry yet. So I wanted to be careful not to hit the sides. Usually I could just push it through, but this time I didn't. But hey, this is not a perfect world of everything going right all the time. So that's what when I what I try to do is bring the whole thing through whenever it gets there. And so I'll have a little um, pocket <laughs> for me to take the ribbon through and loop it. I have a little loop, but that is. And um, I also use wire. Sometimes I have wire I can push it through. So I'll, I'll bring it through and then take the two pieces of ribbon and go through the little loop I have. And then once it's through, I have to make sure it's even, then you tie a little knot. I don't think I tied the knot here right now, but that's what you do. And then it'll hang on the tree for you. Yep, they're crooked. So for the sake of not boring you, I think I just left it. And there you have my Christmas ornament, my Christmas tree ornament with gold and red and a very full tree and a stamp that says joy and peace. Thank you guys. Have a good day.